so okay so we are ready to start our uh, afternoon session the first speaker in the afternoon session is uh, professor takuya okuda from the university of tokyo and you can see the title over there he's speak on the blackboard janus interfacing okay so uh, let me begin by uh, thanking the organizers <coughs> for the invitation <coughs> sorry no, to this uh, nice uh, 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 nice, nice institute, and also uh, for the invitation to speak uh, in this uh, uh, exciting workshop. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you about the Janus interface in two and four dimensions. Uh, uh, so, so this talk is based on uh, two papers. Uh, uh, two papers, uh, one in May and uh, the other one earlier this month, and both of them uh, I wrote with a student. Uh, his name is uh, Kanato Goto, and uh, he's now in the postdoc market, and I highly recommend him. Okay, and um, so so th this is the, I wrote the uh, plan of this talk. So I'll begin with the introduction and motivation, and then I'm going to um, introduce two major players of this talk. So one is the interface entropy, and the other one is something called Karabis diastasis. Then uh, I'm going to describe uh, supersymmetric localization. Uh, for the for the Janus interface in two-dimensional n equals two comma two supersymmetric theories, and then I will also uh, present a conjecture for the Janus interface in four-dimensional n equals two uh, superconformal field theories. So uh, introduction. Oh, and uh, uh, as usual, uh, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, still stop me and ask questions. Uh, so in general, the Janus interface is is uh, 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 an interface or a domain word characterized by by a variation in the coupling constants in the coupling constants of a quantum field theory. So what I mean by that? So an uh, interface or a domain word is a codimension one object, and the let me draw the uh, direction transverse uh, to, the, to the interface in, uh, uh, in this horizontal direction. So this represents uh, position. And uh, let me uh, represent the coupling uh, in the uh, vertical direction. And I assume that uh, this is dimensionless. The coupling constant is dimensionless. And in general, uh, uh, Janus interface can have um, uh, can have an arbitrary profile, so it can go like this, for example. But uh, uh, also, well, a particularly interesting situation is when when the coupling constant changes abruptly as a step function. So. Uh, like this. Um, so the step, fun step function like profile is interesting because uh, this, this is invariant under scale transformation. So uh, in many situations, we expect that such a, a profile uh, gives rise to a conformal uh, Janus interface. And uh, uh, Janus interface has been studied in various contexts. Um, this has been studied. Uh, probably uh, first uh, in uh, two-dimensional superconformal field theories, and uh, then uh, later uh, discussed in other dimensions, such as in uh, four dimensions. Uh, Janus interface has been uh, studied holographically using ADS-CFT, and also uh, it has been studied in connection with uh, DRT walls. And for example, uh, in two dimensions, uh, in the case of the Carabiao uh, Sigma model, um, Duality wall or, or the Janus interface co corresponding to du duality uh, is uh, it can be implemented as a monodromy in the moduli space, and in in algebraic geometry, this is known as known as the Fourier Mukai transform that acts on the K-theory or the derived category of coherent shift. Um, but today we are interested in uh, we are interested in the entropy entropy of the Janus interface.
Okay. Usually, Fourier Mukai transform is a transformation which in interchanges winding number with something like the number of colors. Okay, this is the standard Fourier Mukai. So, in which sense? I mean, this is a kind of Fourier Mukai transform. It's a property of the moduli space in a certain sense. I mean, Fourier Mukai transform. No? Property of the moduli space. And uh, indeed, I. I think yeah, there is a notion of Fourier Mukai transform as you described, but I, actually I'm not familiar with with the situation you just ma mentioned. Um, I don't I don't know the situation. I, I don't know the, co the precise connection. Yeah. Um, yeah. What what I had in mind was uh, um, uh, quantum Kera moduli space of uh, parabial manifolds, and uh, in general such a moduli space have singularities. And, uh, and, and and usually starting with the uh, uh, large volume point, you can go go along a loop that that uh, goes around uh, the singularities, and uh, this induces transformations on uh, uh, on the K-theory charge or the uh, D-brains, which are objects in the Dirac category of coherent shift. So that's what I, what I had in mind. And uh, th th this kind of thing uh, has been, in fact. Uh, uh, has been constructed as as um, mm, as a boundary condition in in the theory that is obtained by folding folding a uh, uh, two-dimensional CFT two-dimensional no, nonlinear sigma model uh, actually two-dimensional uh, gauge linear sigma model but but actually <laughs> I mean I will not be talking about the Fourier Mukai transform today yeah um, okay so I want to uh, exp first, uh, explain the interface entropy. Okay, so uh, so I, so, so uh, I'm going to uh, review a definition that is that is valid arbitrary dimensions. So I'm going to assume that uh, uh, space-time is n plus one dimensions. So, uh, and uh, uh, I want to draw the interface like this. Like this, and so uh, the vertical direction is time. And uh, And the plane I'm drawing uh, horizontal. The plane I'm drawing horizontally uh, corresponds to space. So this is well R to n. Okay, and uh, yeah. So so this is the so this is the. Uh, now th this is the interface, and I want to define the interface entropy using the notion of uh, entanglement entropy, which uh, these days you hear very often. So, uh, so in order to define the entanglement entropy, you need to choose the entangling region, and in this case, uh, I choose. I choose. Um, I I choose this uh, ball, which is um, which is an um, um, n minus one, so n n dimensional n dimensional ball, and I I, I call it I call it a. Okay, so then the uh, the boundary of the region A is is a, a sphere, round sphere of radius R, and I take the I take the region B to be the complement in space of region A. Now, the introduction of the oh, and uh, 
Let me see. Um, so here I want to uh, uh, in explain the interface entropy uh, uh, in the language appropriate for the uh, Janus interface. So I assume that the coupling constant, which I denote by tau here, uh, is uh, tau r. The value of the coupling is tau r, and here uh, the value of coupling here is tau l. Uh, yeah, so, so I'll be using the, lang the lang language for the Janus interface, but um, the, the definition should work, the definition actually works uh, for an arbitrary uh, conformal interface. Anyway, um, in the introduction of the uh, Janus interface changes the Hilbert space. And uh, so in particular, it depends on the coupling constant, tau L uh, on the left half and uh, tau R on the right half. Well, when tau L and tau R are the same, and, uh, we get the Hilbert space uh, without, without an interface. Okay, and uh, in order to define the entanglement entropy, we choose, well, we, we consider the ground state, which is assumed to be unique. And, uh, and, and this depends on tau L and tau R, because the Hilbert space depends on tau L and tau R. And, uh, uh, we define the density matrix rho sub a by taking the trace in the Hilbert space in of region B of this uh, pure state. Then the entanglement, the entanglement entropy uh, S of tau L and tau R is defined to be the to be the uh, von Neumann entropy of this density matrix rho sub a. So this is just the entanglement entropy, and uh, for but uh, and it it. It receives contribution from the bulk and also from the interface. And I want to separate the contribution from the interface. And for that purpose, um, I define the interface entropy to be a S of tau L tau R minus S of tau L tau L plus S of tau r, tau r divided by two. Um, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that's right. So, in n, in two dimensions, for, for which n is one, uh, uh, this entangling region. Uh, so, okay. So, so, so. S n minus one is just uh, considered two points, and uh, it does not intersect the interface. But in higher dimensions, this ball and the, the and the sphere, uh, it intersects intersects the interface. That's right. Uh, this is a choice. And, and uh, yeah, this this is a, this is a choice, and. Uh, um, uh, in in general, the interface entropy depends on. Well, I mean the the the. Let's see. So so in two dimensions, uh, it turns out that the interface entropy does not depend on R, and but in higher dimensions, uh, uh, the the, the actually the UV divergent part depends on the radius. I I, I think at least in four dimensions that's the case. Let, let me see. So uh, so in. In two dimensions, uh, so sorry. In general, the entanglement entropy contains UV divergences, and uh, in this combination, some of the divergences cancel out. And uh, in 2D, in fact, all the UV divergences cancel out, and uh, it's the interface entropy uh, defined in this way uh, coincides 
with the logarithm of the so called uh, g factor g. Uh, usually, the g factor is defined for, for a boundary, for a boundary of a conformal field theory, or well, two dimensional conformal field theory, and uh, given a conformal interface by folding. By, by folding uh, okay. So, if you have a if you have an um, interface in, uh, in two dimensions, you can, you can fold it like this. And then uh, this defines a boundary. So uh, um, given a conform interface, you can give a, give, give a boundary and the boundary condition. And uh, then uh, you can, we, we can talk about the, the so-called boundary entropy or the G factor for the boundary condition. Anyway, so, so uh, the interface entropy defined in this way coincides with the logarithm of the G factor. Uh, this was uh, shown by uh, Calabrese and Cardi. And in four dimensions, in four, in four dimensions, uh, uh, this definition of interface entropy was uh, used by uh, Estes, Jensen, Obanon, Tatis, and Rasse in uh, 2014. And I'm going to say more about their work later. So I finished the, uh, the definition of uh, giving the definition of the uh, interface entropy. Any, is there any question? More question? Yeah. So you're asking what uh, this rep what this represents? Uh, so these are coupling. Okay, they are coupling constants. Yeah. So so when. Okay. Ah. Okay, oh, oh, oh. Oh. I see. Okay. So. So these are couplings. Ah, <laughs> okay, sorry. Confu conf confusing. So, so if I do the folding trick and I get a boundary condition, can't I get many different kinds of boundary conditions? How do I decide which one corresponds to this uh, interface? I mean, usually if, I, right, I mean, boundary, most, 2D boundary CFTs have many allowed boundary conditions. That's right. Yeah. So in general, uh, given uh, in a given CFT or given uh, two CFTs, uh, there can be more than one interface. And given one conformal interface, by folding, you get oh. one boundary. So, so you have a choice uh, for the interface. Yeah. Fine. Choice of interface gives, gives a choice of boundary condition. OK. So. Um, I finally finished the, yeah, the review of the definition of the inter interface entropy. Now, uh, okay, I can use this. Yeah, I think that that's the expectation, but uh, I'm not sure if it, it's been shown or not. Yes, uh, in two dimensions it's been done, and uh, in four dimensions, yeah, we are working on it. Yes, so um, so the next uh, player in my talk is Calabi's diastasis or uh, diastasis. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You have to look up the dictionary to, to see how to pronounce it and uh, what, what it means, because I cannot explain what it means. Uh, but I, I can explain what Karabi's diastasis is. So um, let M and G be the Kera manifold. Uh, and uh, so this is a, a workshop on uh, supersymmetry. 
So everyone knows that uh, everyone knows what uh, uh, K manifold is, and everyone knows that uh, locally one can introduce the uh, K -ra potential. Um, now I'm using <laughs> using uh, the symbols T as T as uh, uh, coordinates. Uh, such that the metric, the Kera metric is given by the second derivative of K. Now, um, let's consider the situation where uh, T and T prime are two points uh, on the Kera manifold and uh, let us assume that they are close in, they are close to each other. Then uh, Karabi shows that there is a unique analytic continuation of the Kera potential to let's see T maybe okay I draw it like this K of T and T bar prime. Well, and other various other combinations. For example, okay, K of T prime and T bar, things like that. Um, then, what is Karabi's diastasis? It is a particular combination. Of the Kera potential, the copies of Kera potential So thi this is just a definition of Karabi's diastasis. And uh, one thing that is nice about it about it is that. This is a uh, invariant under uh, uh, Kera transformation. So uh, uh, the Kera potential is not uniquely defined, actually, it's uh, defined only locally. And uh, from one part to another, when you uh, when you go from one part to another, you have to change the Kera potential in general by this uh, Kera transformation, where f of t is a holomorphic function. Yeah, well, holomorphic function. Okay, so so this is this is the definition of Kera. Is the definition clear? I hope it is. Okay. Then uh, I want to explain. Hmm. I want to explain uh, what uh, Bacas, Bruna, Douglas, and Rasteri did in 2013. So they considered an um, n equals okay two dimensional n equals two comma two super conformal field theory, and then the uh, moduli space is known. Moduli space or a conformal manifold uh, these days it's, it's known also known as uh, 
This is a, a locally a product. Of uh, the space of coupling of chiral parameters, and the space of couplings, and, uh, and the space of sorry, so modular space is a product locally a product of the space of chiral couplings, and the space of twisted chiral couplings. Um, and we can consider a Janus interface in which the coupling, uh, twist, for example, chiral coupling, only the chiral coupling changes, or, or a Janus interface in which uh, uh, only twisted chiral coupling changes. And I'm going, to consider, I'm going to consider the latter case. And uh, if you do that, we preserve some supersymmetry. In fact, uh, if the twisted chiral only the twisted chiral coupling changes, then uh, 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 the corresponding, the resulting Janus interface uh, preserves B-type supersymmetry. So after folding, you get the B-type boundary condition. So I'm, I'm going to consider a situation like this. Then uh, their claim is that the interface entropy is essentially the same as Kravitz diastasis. So uh, what they showed is that uh, twice. Uh, enter the interface entropy is uh, well. I'm writing this again. Yeah, so the, uh, the interface entropy is uh, essentially the uh, diastasis. And they gave several arguments, and, and they did various computations. But uh, there is a, uh, they, gave also a, they also gave a general proof. And uh, this general proof is, uh, is not hard to explain if I assume certain knowledge. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just explain. Uh, how the general proof uh, goes. Yeah, um, the some the knowledge I assume has to do with uh, TT star uh, equations or uh, TT star so topological anti-topological um, equations and amplitude. So let's see. Um, yeah, for for B type, B type or A type uh, boundary condition, which I denote by B, it is known that the interface, the G factor. Yes, yeah, so, so so now I'm I'm making some assumptions. But uh, it is known that uh, the, 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 the G factor is given by the overlap of the boundary state for the boundary condition and the, and the canonical Ramon Ramon ground state. Uh, and we take the uh, absolute value divided by the overlap actually the normal squared of the uh, canonical Ramon Ramon ground state. So, 
So, so I call it canonical Ramon Ramon ground state. Uh, so what, what do you mean by that? So uh, given that uh, n equals 2 comma 2 super conform field theories, in general, uh, there are more than one uh, Ramon Ramon ground states. Uh, whereas in the NS, in the NS, NS sector, uh, there is a, a unique vacuum which corresponds to the, the identity operator. Now, um, well, given the choice of uh, A or B type, um, there is a, uh, you, you can do a spectral flow from the NS, NS sector to the Ramon Ramon sector. And the canonical Ramon Ramon ground state is the one uh, that is obtained from the, from the NS NS ground state by the spectral flow. So that's the definition. Um, but actually, uh, you, know, you know, you can also consider A type and uh, uh, anti B type, anti A type, these things. And uh, so, so I, when I put zero bar, I, when I put a bar, it corresponds to, well, um, spectral flow in the other direction. And this corresponds to, well, anti B type. Yeah, so so th this, that's why this is called uh, topological, anti topological amplitude. Uh, anyway, um, so, so <laughs> let me assume this. Uh, and, and another another thing is that uh, uh, this overlap uh, uh, depends on depends on the, the uh, depends on the twisted curl coupling T uh, only holomorphically. Okay. Now I'm going to consider uh, folding. Uh, so I'm going to consider a cylinder, and uh, I have T sub R, T sub L here. Then uh, I, yeah. So I'm going to fold here and obtain. Uh, obtain uh, a boundary uh, coming from the interface. Now, um, in this region, we have a product theory. And uh, so pr product theory, and uh, its chiral couplings are now T, let's see, so T sub L bar and T sub R. So these are the uh, chiral, so tw twisted chiral couplings. Then uh, the interface entropy for the Janus interface can be written as, okay, let me take the square. Let me take the square. Uh, did I make it? I think, sorry. I think I need a um, square root here. Yeah, so uh, then this is a uh, this is given by the uh, let's see the 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 bound the boundary state obtained from the interface by folding times. Times the uh, Ramon Ramon. Yes. Yeah, Ramon Ramon grounds, uh, Ramon Ramon ground state, and 
uh, and uh, the and it's conjugate. Let's see. Uh, okay. Now, so this this com this one is uh, now uh, for this overlap is for the product theory. So this is in fact uh, equal to the product of the uh, uh, of the theory given by the the uh, let's see. So, so b before folding, before folding. So okay, I'm, I, I'm using this notation. Uh, it can be written in this way. And now, uh, again, <laughs> okay, I'm making some assumption. But uh, it is known that uh, uh, this thing, this combination is given by the Kera potential on the moduli space, and uh, okay, by repeating the same, and uh, also uh, this part is given by. this now um, I I well sort of assumed or explained that uh, uh, this combination the overlap between the boundary state and the Ramana Mugulan state depends on the twisted color parameter homomorphically so and, and, and also uh, let's see um, yeah, so, so and uh, uh, when the interface is absent, this becomes uh, just the overlap between the Ramon Ramon ground state and uh, uh, its conjugate. But uh, the definition of the folding, therefore, therefore, uh, this factor has to be has to be e to the minus K, no. So T sub L, okay. TR, TR, T sub L. And uh, this, this is the conjugate. Now, so, so then uh, this, this means that, okay, twice, okay, or logarithm of G factor squared is diastasis. Uh, is the logic clear? I made several assumptions, but uh, is this general proof clear or up to the assumptions I made? Okay, no, no answer. Uh, I'm not sure if, if this was trivial or if, or if this was completely confusing. Why the, the numerator? Is related, yeah. So good. Uh, so so pictorially, um, so pictorially, what this what this represents is uh, yeah uh, yeah. So boundaries, uh, some the oh, uh, uh, this uh, amplitude. Actually, um, so usually uh, people actually draw a cigar, and uh, uh, this is. This is infinitely long. Let's see. Um, so this B int represents a boundary, okay? Obtained by uh, folding the interface. And uh, uh, here, okay, usually people put topological twist, but, but okay, but it doesn't really matter. So here, here we have some uh, Ramon Ramon ground state in the folded theory. So, so this is in the folded picture. So if you unfold it, what you get is, well, infinite, well, it doesn't really matter, but uh, 
So you get the you just get a cylinder. You just get a cylinder where uh, you have the Ramon Ramon ground state corresponding to the right half of the theory and the uh, uh, Ramon Ramon ground state corresponding to the left half of the theory. Uh, and and this depends on this now depends on uh, tau l tau l bar so t l bar am I drawing yeah, yeah t l bar and depends on t l bar and t r but when they are the same when they are the same uh, uh, this just becomes Just becomes the uh, 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 okay spaced by the coupling T. So so this th then this is the the, the this is the uh, overlap of the Ramon Ramon ground state uh, in the original theory. And it is now known that uh, uh, it's known that the overlap is related to the exponential of the minus uh, Kera potential of the modulus space. Okay, so and and then b because because uh, yeah, this combination can depend on the parameters only holomorphically. Uh, when T L and T R are not the same, this expression must be given by the analytic continuation of e to the minus k. Is it clear or uh, too confusing? Sorry, I have just one question. Yes. Uh, so when you patch together conformity theory from Carroll and anti-Carroll, or we call Carroll and twisted Carroll, you have to take into account the monodromies. Uh, where is it, the uh, information of monodromy here? Uh, uh, so, okay, here, here there is no monodromy. And uh, so, okay, I, I made it, okay. Yeah, so and here I'm only talking about twisted chiral couplings. There, yeah, so here, here there is no monodromy. Okay, no. Actually, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming that the TL and TR are uh, only slightly different. Okay. Yeah, okay. Th this proof was not uh, a main part of my talk. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry if I made it uh, too confusing. I, I, I thought it's not, yeah, it, it's not, it should not be so difficult. It's just my, that my explanation was not very clear. So if you are interested, you can ask me uh, later. I think it's, it's something simple. And, uh, well, Now I want to, uh, so, so, so far I've been talking about what other people did, okay? And now I, I want to explain what we, what we did. So um, one thing we did well, for two, in two, Suzy localization, one thing we did is a Suzy localization in uh, 2D n equals 2 comma 2 theory. So, uh, just as I explained here, uh, the interface entropy for, for the Janus interface can be written as e to the minus k TL TR bar e to the minus k TR TL bar e to the minus k TL TL bar e to the minus k TR, TR bar. Now, um, over the last uh, several years, we learned uh, that uh, the Kera potential, e to the minus Kera potential, can be uh, written 
uh, as not just as the, as the, the overall of the Ramon Ramon grand state, but also as the sphere partition function, supersymmetric sphere partition function that can, in principle, be computed, or well, that can be computed by uh, CD localization. Well, this was uh, uh, conjectured by Jokers, uh, uh, Jokers, Kumar, Rapan, Morrison, and Romo, and uh, has been um, gi given uh, arguments or proofs by uh, various people, by uh, Gomez, Gomez uh, Grachkovic, Komagoski, these people. Uh, now, given such a connection, it's natural to expect that uh, one can define we can construct supersymmetric Janus interface on a two sphere and, uh, 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 and uh, do localization and show that it gives And a continuation of sphere partition function. Okay. What, okay. Um, I mean, um, the partition function, supersymmetric partition function in the presence of Janus interface, which uh, depends on TL and TR bar, for example, uh, gives analytic continuation of uh, uh, this CR partition function. So this was this is natural to expect, and uh, uh, it, we actually demonstrated it. So how did we do this? So in order to construct the uh, Janus interface on, uh, on a two-sphere, or in general, uh, curved space-time, or in general, uh, uh, in some supergravity background, what, what, what we did, what we can do is uh, to use the off-shell method. What I mean by this is to promote twisted chiral parameter t to, to a background twisted chiral multiplet and demand that the variation the variation of the fermion in the multiplet vanish and also a demand that the fermion uh, schematically this equation looks like something multiplying derivative t plus something multiplying the auxiliary field e so we can uh, solve this equation uh, so e auxiliary field is given in terms of the derivative of the twisted chiral coupling and uh, uh, if we do that, uh, we can okay, we maintain a supersymmetry and we can do a supersymmetric localization. And indeed, the uh, resulting partition function, supersymmetric partition function in the presence of the Janus interface gives rise to, gives the analytic continuation of the uh, sphere partition function. And uh, uh, the, the uh, we also uh, gave a prescription for computing uh, monodromies of such a uh, 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 for, for the Janus interface. Um, now, in two dimensions, another thing we did was to uh, point out the following connection. Let me see. But in view of time, I might skip this actually. 
Yeah, so I, I'm just, I, I'm just saying words. Um, so, okay. Ah, right. Yeah, so, so this, this depends on TL and TR bar, so uh, okay. it corresponds to okay. this factor. Yeah, um, yeah. This equality actually can, can also be shown by another uh, method, and this was done by Bacchus and Plenkner using uh, the so called super viral anomaly. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so in, two, in two dimensions, another thing we did was to consider the Janus interface uh, in another supergravity background corresponding to topological A twist with omega deformation on the two sphere. Uh, we can use the same official method to construct the Janus interface and do uh, localization. And the result of the uh, localization calculation uh, gives some answer, which, uh, which we, we observe to be equal to the generating function of uh, correlation functions in the A-twisted uh, model with omega deformation. Yeah, um, so I think this is a, a curious, uh, I think this is a, a rather curious observation. Okay, so uh, now I'm finishing the, sto the two dimensional story. And uh, after this, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, switch to four dimensions. Is there, a, is there a question at this point? Somebody's asking from using the phone? So, so now, now I'm, I'm changing the topic a little bit to the uh, four-dimensional uh, setting. So four, di four dimensions. So, um, so, so over the last several years, uh, we learned that uh, two-dimensional n equals two comma two theories and four-dimensional n equals two theories have uh, many properties in common. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, for, for example, the relation between the supersymmetric uh, partition function for the super conformal field theory uh, uh, is related to the uh, Kera potential. And uh, this statement is true uh, both in uh, two dimensions and four dimensions. So then uh, we can ask uh, what happens. Uh, for the for the connection between the interface entropy and the Janus and and the uh, and, and Karabi diastasis. Okay. Uh, so to address this, uh, let us first uh, explain the work of so in the remaining uh, six six or seven minutes. Let me first uh, explain the work of uh, Estes, Jensen, Obanon, Tatis, and Taste. So one thing they did in 2014 was to use the Ryu Takayanagi formula, so holographic en entanglement entropy formula, to compute the uh, entanglement entropy in the presence of the uh, Janus interface in four dimensional n equals four super SUN super Young May theory with large n. Now, interface entropy was defined uh, by subtracting some bulk contributions from the entanglement entropy. And uh, in the four-dimensional case, they found that 
not all UV divergence is cancelled out. So there remain a divergent part that looks like some constant times the radius of the entangling uh, surface, which was a sphere, divided by the UV cut of epsilon, plus a finite part, d0, and, uh, well, in the limit, and, and yeah, something that vanishes. In the limit. Okay. Um, now the relevant coupling, the relevant uh, complex homomorphic coupling is, as usual, theta divided by two pi plus i times four pi divided by g young mu squared. And uh, when uh, on the two sides of the Janus interface, the theta parameters are the same, but G uh, young news, well, G young news uh, are not the same, they found that. The finite part of the interface entropy is given by this formula. Now, uh, our observation is that if we use the SL2R invariance of type 2B supergravity, so we have SL2R in supergravity, uh, not SL2Z as in uh, string theory, uh, this result is actually equivalent to the statement that D0 is proportional to the to Karabis diastasis uh, for some Kera potential, actually the natural Kera potential. Um, yeah, well, the, split, the, split, the splitting of the numerical co constant here and here is, th there is some arbitrariness, but this, this choice, I think, is motivated by the relation between the uh, Kera uh, yeah, there, there is some arbitrariness, there is some arbitrariness. Yeah, but, we, but it, it, it's motivated by a relation between the sphere partition function, the four dimensional sphere partition function, and the uh, Kera potential. Okay, so, so, uh, so this is uh, this, this our this are our observation, and based on this uh, observation, we make, we make a conjecture.
that uh, the g sub zero, the finite part of the uh, interface entropy, is proper to diastasis for general four dimensional n equals two uh, super conformal filter. The reason we say n equals two uh, is uh, that the structure of the super superspring partition functions and the uh, relation to the Kähler potential are uh, very similar to uh, a two dimensional n equals two comma two case. And we are now uh, working to prove this uh, in, uh, to, uh, using some arguments. Okay, this are all I wanted to say. Thank you. Let us thank, uh, let us thank uh, the speaker. So. Uh, some few questions. So.